Now in this uh, short interview we speak to the legendary off-road racer John Giles. John rode in the International Six Days Trials 15 times and won 12 gold medals and 3 silver. All of course riding his uh, trusty Triumph. John is now 87 years old and only stopped racing just two years ago. In this interview he talks about his time riding with two other motorcycling legends, movie star Steve McQueen and the iconic Bud Ekins who, as we all know, was the actual stuntman who performed the fence jump on a triumph in that great World War II movie, The Great Escape. Let me, let, me, let me start off, right? This is the fam most famous off-road off rider in the whole of Kent. His Kent, name's yeah. John Giles, oh. 87 years old, from Tunbridge in Kent. And he's still sponsoring Kevin Reed on this wonderful <laughs> bike that uh, yeah. they use in the <laughs> Great Escape. <laughs> right, so, no, John, so John will tell you something about his life. On, yeah, I, 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 uh, I rode in uh, the International Six Days Trial um, 15 times uh -huh. and um, I got um, 12 gold medals and uh, 3 silver. So you were quite handy on a bike? Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but only a Triumph. Yeah. Only a Triumph. He had Triumph all in his blood, didn't you? Oh yeah, I rode for Triumph from 1951 to 1968 when they closed down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so how did you get involved with Steve McQueen then? Or how did he the International Six you? Days Trial right. was uh, in uh, East Germany, Erfurt, right. and um, a triumph, he rode a Triumph oh, which oh. was um, uh, given to him, sponsored by Triumphs of England. Right. and. Um, uh, I drove one of the transit, I, I was with a competitor called Roy Peplow and we drove to Erfurt in a pickup. Steve McQueen? We picked him up. Alright. Oh, I'm talking about when in the communist days, you see. Oh, was this before he was a big TV star or was he still oh, he's TV? always been a star. Oh, right. Yeah, he's always been a, Steve McQueen's always been a star. Oh, no. <laughs> and um, the thing is, he, uh, he was flown over from America with Bud on um, a military aircraft and it landed in is this Berlin. To keep it low profile yeah. sort of thing, is that? Well, no, I suppose it, uh, in the corner. Well, Where the hell did he end up in a transit van if he goes <laughs> <from> <laughs> well, we, we, we picked him up. We picked him <laughs> I mean, up. That was about his lower than his standards of it getting picked up in a transit van. Well, there was no other option for him <laughs> other than walk. And. Um, uh, we got on this transit van, we picked him up at uh, Berlin, because Berlin was split into two in those days, and uh, we had to wait on the, it, we was, Roy Papp and I was on the eastern block side, trying to tell the others on the western side that um, we was there, waiting for him. <laughs> and we stood on the top of the pickup, waving the flag on the top of the, not pickup, the truck, uh -huh. like this, and eventually, we got through to them, or somebody must have gone on for that. And they appeared with their avocets and things like that. And they jumped in there. Did you know it was him you were picking up? Oh, yeah. Right. Well, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, he rode a Triumph, a factory Triumph, oh, you see. Somebody was having a laugh and just pick up Steve McQueen on your way. No, no, this was true. <laughs> this was true. And we drove, we picked him up and we drove a matter of... We got about 200 miles to drive to Erfurt in this pickup and we was driving along and all of a sudden it stopped and the, uh, this vehicle had got a, a V4 um, Ford engine in it, a V4, and the petrol pump on the V4 had got a, a very long arm, 12 inches long, prefabricated and it went round and, and drove off the camshaft and it had broken in half. Uh -huh. So we got no petrol coming pumping with the tank. So we took a t uh, tank off one of the Triumphs, uh -huh. put it on the roof, uh -huh. and filled it up with petrol, and took the air bottles off of the bikes, because uh -huh. we got air bottles, um, the 
we used to put the pipes up the handlebar, oh, right, right, right. and we got one of those pipes and ju put it all together and hooked it into the tank on the roof to the Garborough. Right. And we drove to, we saw a scrapyard, and we dro drove into the scrapyard, and one of the policemen followed us in, one of what we was doing in this scrapyard, and we was looking for a fuel tank. Well, you try going into a, a <laughs> East German scrapyard, can't speak the language, uh, all you got is paper and pencil. And we said, well, that, that looks better, about a seven ton truck over there. And we are, is it scrap sort of thing? And, uh, is it scrap? Finish, finish, get kaput. And uh, he goes, yeah, kaput. What, the fuel tank? Fuel tank off of that, is it, is it possible? Possible. We drew that night. Like, oh, yeah, so he got his mate over, and they got a forklift truck, and they ripped this side of the truck out to get it easy to get the fuel tank. And they got the fuel tank out, and we put it on the roof, strapped it on there, and uh, this communist policeman, was on the, all in his leather and his CZ motorcycle waiting for us to... A police CZ motorcycle? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah CZ motorcycle. Was they was in brown leather kit they was yeah. there. Very fierce sort of people and they followed us all the way to Erfurt. But anyway, we get some... I got the friend. Oh yeah, we got this fuel tank on, put it on the top, drove to a, for a filling station, which there weren't many about, I tell you then. And the fuel that you got out of it was like paraffin. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we filled this tank up in the top, and Steve paid for it. Mm -hmm. Of his credit card. Nah, no credit card. No credit, credit card. Uh -huh. And uh, card there was an argument with Bud and Steve that um, whether he's going to pay in dollars or for, or I forget what it was called. Now. Deutschmark. I don't know whether it's called something else. Then anyway, that do Deutschmarks, oh. and. Um, <laughs> In the end, um, he kept waving these dollars about in front of this scrap man. Did, it? And <laughs> did the scrap man know who he was at the time? Well, could I? Could he? he knew we was foreign, and that was oh, it. He, 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 no, 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 he ain't got a clue. <laughs> and got a, and uh, eventually, he called one of them into the office. Uh -huh. um, Stephen Bubb went into the office, and they didn't want this policeman to go in to the office to follow him in. And he done a deal with the bloke in there with dollars. <laughs> of course he did. They yeah. were worth a fortune. Yeah, so uh, we bought this fuel, fuel with dollars and then off we went, 200 miles down to Erfurt. Uh -huh. And arrived there, found the hotel and um, he said to us, he said, you, you want a good, we'll have a good meal. This was Steve, we'll have a good meal. And in those days, in the communist days, there was international hotels, not many people knew about them, mm -hmm. and all they would accept was uh, Western currency. And when he went in and waved his dollars about <laughs> to, the, uh, to the girl who was in the, off in the office mm -hmm. desk there, mm -hmm. uh, we got, you know, can we pay in dollars? Yes, 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 what would you like? And anyway, we all sat down and, of course, um, uh, they wanted some French wine, if ever you did. And I tell you what, they come up with some nice French wine, and we sat there and we drank a couple of bottles of wine. <laughs> and in the end, he had a bill of about 120, 130 quid, the value, of, and he paid it all in dollars. Oh, like, yeah. And he said, um, they was quite happy, the people. And, uh, and the next day, I was on the start line, we'd handed our bikes in, and then suddenly I looked at the programme and blowed if I wasn't riding with him and Bud mm -hmm. on the same minute. Mm -hmm. There was three people a minute used to go off right. the start line. And I've got photos at times. You time. don't expect to be riding with these two then? <laughs> well, no, well, no was, I didn't. He was famous, wasn't he? John was. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> the only famous film star. <laughs> yeah. I was in the English trophy team, right. you see, and I'd got um, a nice bike. It was, an, it was a real nice bike. And we arrived on the line, three of us on the line, and I put my card in my teeth. That was the thing. The time cards. All right. You put your time cards, right. and I thought I'm going to get to the clock first, right. and I'm going to be first down the road. Because there was there was so many people. It's raining. So many people following Steve McQueen. Uh -huh. We're on BMW motorbikes. Uh -huh. You know, photographers uh -huh. standing on the back, uh -huh. following him, you know, and uh -huh. people going mad over him. 
and uh, I was trying to ride in this but I thought well I've got to get off first and the three a minute went off but you could only go as quick as you could put the time card into the thing and then off down the road no. and, uh, and then um, we started off at the starting line uh -huh. and uh, I went off down the road expecting him to follow me sort of thing and he did he he followed me down the road and then Bud did as well and because I'd ridden with Bud in English scrambles and things, so I knew how quick he could go and that but I didn't know anything about Steve and he come flying by me once down the road all on a big broad side you know. right. yeah yeah so not like him is it nah no. nah well, not like me then so how many years was that you knew Steve McQueen then uh, well, I was doing 64 and then having travelled with him then, and two years before I wrote, I went to the same event with him where he was under an assumed name. Okay. Nobody knew he was Steve McQueen, he was somebody else. And I rode with him, that was in Poland. Dennis must have been Harvey Mushman or something. Well, you? I'm not sure whether it was Mushman, but uh, he went under that name quite a bit. And, um, and then the rest, he lasted that day. And then he had a bit of a, he's a Latin type and loves to show everybody what he can do. Oh, and he, he got was, it, he, he was good on the Oh, he yeah. was good yeah, on the bike. Sort of yeah, he was reasonable. And uh, we stopped outside of this school and all the kids was mad. Steve McQueen, film stars and all the flag, <laughs> English flags and the, and the police didn't like the Western flags being flown right. and that. And, um, Anyway, he, he got onto the playing field in this. I was still going down the road, so I didn't know what was happening. And uh, he did this demonstration on the playing field, all sides of the wall around. So I was told by somebody else. And because um, he dropped it in a big way. Yeah, yeah he dropped it, hit a tree, wrote the bike off and himself. And he was in hospital. And, uh, and then I, all I'd got with me then was Bud and Bud stayed with me for about two days I think yeah. and then uh, he got stuck in a in a gully yeah. and, and uh, a rider come by on a bike on an hour gun and hit him and his leg was trapped in the bike yeah. and he broke his leg oh so I, I finished up uh, only one going on the others had packed up you know. yeah. well it was quite an adventure not? oh yeah yeah, yeah. But every year, the International Six Days Trial, we used to ride in, in all the countries in Europe. Uh -huh. It was always like that, you know. How did you get time off to do that sort of thing? We filming and whatever. Who, me? Oh, Steve McQueen. Well, he didn't bother, did he? You know, mm -hmm. he didn't bother. What bikes are they? I suppose that, I don't really know, an insurance company, he must have done deals with people because they were the photographers was there, they knew he was coming. I'll tell you who knew he was. A parry, po parry post, is it? Parry part. Parry match. Oh, parry match, the yeah. magazine. Yeah, the magazine. Okay. Which I've got, uh, I've got a parry match, still got a magazine of me and him. Were and so they chasing them about? Oh, yeah, terrible. Yeah. On motorbikes. Yeah. Every time he, because, I don't know what, in the week, of course he was at the hospital, these parry match people have got to the hospital because they knew he was in the hospital yeah. and of course they had to put a guard on there everybody going in but um, yeah so well, when, when did you stop riding bikes then? Uh, two years ago two years? Mm. you were riding up to two years ago? yeah what were you riding at that time of trial? this one. Oh, uh, right. this one it's an unusual but, bike yeah like it's, it's, uh, is, it's this one, is this your old bike? yeah, yeah. it's one of seven what's all the fancy wee modifications on it? oh yeah well I've got the best of the bits, you see, with the Triumph, uh, pre-unit crankcases are old and they're yeah. tired yeah. and um, the bearings come loose in the cases and um, mm -hmm. you have a machine there and then put sleeves in and then they put case break. Mm -hmm. So I, I use uh, a 750 crankcase mm -hmm. unit, cut the gearbox off and... Um, well, I can see you've made some modifications Yeah. So it's quite strong. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, well, thanks for that uh, little right. story, John. That's something for the archives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I thanks for that. Yeah, that's all right.